the uh, other parts here to finish up this section. It was a long section. <clears throat> Let's. Uh, what about the angle? Can we figure out an angle between planes that aren't parallel, of course? <clears throat> All right, so we've got a, a plane, say like this, and then let's uh, let's go with another plane angled to it here. So let me try to draw one. It's kind of behind it, and then comes out. So we've got this. This little piece is kind of behind there. Just kind of give you a little bit of a visual there, okay? So we've got intersecting planes. And so we want to know, this would cut across there. So we want to know what about this angle right here between the acute angle uh, between our planes. <laughs> well, let's look at the cross section here. If you look at the cross section, we've got, so we're looking at our planes from this, this angle here. So theta is here. All right, well, <clears throat> what we know about, though, are our normal vectors. Because when we've got a plane, the equation of a plane, We've got our normal vectors pretty well lined out. So what would be true about these normal vectors? So if I did a normal vector to that and a normal vector to that, which, I don't know if I can draw it here, let's see, the normal vector would be just uh, coming out of this one. Uh, so that would be normal to that. And then this one would be normal to this. So it's the same angle, yeah. This angle is going to be the same angle. The, the angle between the normal vectors is going to have to be the same as the angle between the, uh, the planes. So the angle between the planes is just the angle between the normal vectors. <clears throat> um, now, what do we know about angle between vectors? Isn't the dot product of two vectors equal to the magnitude products, uh, product of the magnitudes times cosine of the angle between them. And so the cosine of our angle between is just going to be the dot product divided by the product of the magnitude. So let's find the angle between these planes. Two z equals four y minus x, and three x minus twelve y plus six z equals one. So, to get this angle between, we need the normal vectors. Now, the normal vector on this one, this one's our N2, second plane, so let's call it N2. Very easy, right? A, B, and C is 3, negative 12, and 6. However, to do the uh, normal vector over here, we kind of need it more in standard, uh, standard form, so we need the x's and the y's on the same, x's, y's, and z's on the same. So let's just uh, add the x, subtract the 4y, and we've got, so our normal vector here would be 1, negative 4, and 2. 
Huh? These are parallel. These are parallel? Aha. Uh -huh. These are parallel. These are parallel. I didn't mean for them to be parallel. <laughs> These are parallel. So now, uh, yeah. let's just change it. Let's change it. Just make it Z. <laughs> so that's one. It was almost parallel. Okay. Those would have been parallel. Oh, shoot. Yeah, they would have been parallel because that would have been. Three times three times three and times three. Yeah. I'll just scale there. Well, let's see. So they didn't cross the first round, but now let's see what happens. All right. <coughs> so it, this one messes it up then. It's not uh, proportional as it was. So, what do we got? Is it a small angle? Well, the cosine of the angle in between them, do the dot product, divide that by the magnitudes product. So the dot product, 3 times 1 plus 48, negative 4 times negative 12, 1 times 6 is 6, so it would be 57 over the square root of N1's uh, magnitude. So that would be 1 plus 16 plus 1, 18. And that's a little more, 9, 144, and 36. Square those. So it's the square root of 18 times the square root of... 189? <clears throat> Where's the... No, it's up. Okay. So, uh, theta then would be our cosine inverse of that 57 over whatever that is. I didn't bring my calculator, so. All right. Okay. Four degrees. What is it? Uh, okay. Huh? About twelve degrees. Okay. All right. <coughs> One other thing on. Uh, Section 12.5, I thought I should mention this section here that I should mention, is uh, how do we find that line of intersection for the planes? For two intersecting planes. All right, so same, uh, same idea, except now we want... Uh, not the angle, but we want this line here of uh, intersection. What's that line? Um, <clears throat> well, what we need is two things, right, for a line. 
you need a point on the line, which uh, you know that's that's going to be a point that satisfies both planes. So it's it's basically solving solving a system. So we need a point on that x zero y zero z zero on both planes. And we need a vector, right, for our line. Okay, well, <clears throat> if you think about it here, this vector is uh, um, what we can use is our cross product of our. The normal vectors, yeah. It's going to be perpendicular to both to both planes or both normal vectors. So you use a cross product. That'll be our vector. All right. <laughs> now, like I said, uh, point on both planes. So um, to find that. Point, you can just use uh, use a system. Um, just try try using like a given x value, say x is zero, <clears throat> if that doesn't work. Try something else, okay? But you're just trying to find one x, y, z that works in all three. And so you just try your x equals zero, do x equals one maybe. That doesn't work because uh, what happens is, um, I was working through these, you might get something where you get a, an, uh, an inconsistent system or something like that. So you just need to find there's not an x equals zero point, in other words. So try an x equals one. All right, <clears throat> so find the line of intersection for these planes, 3x minus 6y minus 2z equals 15, and 2x minus y minus 2z equals 5, and I'm pretty sure those don't intersect, right? <laughs> I mean, those aren't parallel. Yeah, those aren't parallel, so, okay. They want to mess up this one. <clears throat> All right, so this one we have our normal vector. Here is uh, 3, negative 6, and negative 2. And then uh, <clears throat> the normal vector here is 2, negative 1, and negative 2. So our direction vector for our line is the cross product vector. And so that would be, cover that one up, it would be 6, I'm sorry, 12 minus 2, so that would be 10. This one minus J1 would be, cover that one up, so we've got uh, minus 6 plus 4. So that would be minus 2. So it would be minus minus 2, positive 2. And then the k, cover up the k ones, that would be negative 3 plus 12, 9. So 10, 2, 9. And so that's the direction. Now for the point, the x0, y0, z0, said try, uh, try x equals 0. If it doesn't work, try x equals 1 or something else. <clears throat> All right, so if we let x equals 0, that uh, takes those out, and we'll have minus 6y minus 2z equals 15, and minus y minus 2z equals 5. And that's easy enough to solve. That would be uh, just subtract. 
change those to the opposite sign, so that would be negative 6y plus y would be negative 5y. Those would go out. And then 5 minus uh, 15, 15 minus 5 would be 10, so y would be negative 2. Which means, what's the z? Well, if y is negative 2, that would be positive 12 minus 2z equals 15, so that would be negative 2z equals 3, so z equals negative 2 thirds. And so our x0, y0, z0 would be x is 0, y is negative 2, and z is negative 2 thirds. <coughs> Which means our line is, in parametric form, x equals, we do the x0 plus at. So that would be 0 plus 10t. That's just 10t. Y is the y0 plus bt. That would be negative 2 plus 2t. And then the z is z0, which is negative 2 thirds, plus ct, which is 19. 